Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we get started, are you thinking of creating a podcast or are you a podcast host already? As a podcast strategist, I can help you to launch or relaunch a purposeful and profitable podcast, which will inspire, entertain and educate a global audience. Simply book in a one-to-one call with me right now via the Calendly link in the show notes and together we'll focus on the purpose of your podcast. Today on Focus on Why, I am joined by Thomas Kauke. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me over. Well, I was introduced to you by the wonderful Helen Chorley, who is a common friend and also a fellow Malta resident. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I spent some good time with, with Helen and had some really good discussions. Brilliant. Well, let's have a great discussion today, Thomas, because I'm very keen to hear what it is that you're focusing on at the moment. So um, I, I come from the, the, the tattoo wire train, really. So, I, well, I came from the gaming from from the gaming world and shifted to the to the tattoo wire world. Um, but at the moment, I'm I'm exploring even further than tattooing, like because because this is a, a constant change. Like sometimes I, I I'm I'm asking myself if I am ever going to settle, sort of like are you going to find your place? But but I mean. It's not about finding the place. It's about evolving, I think. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I do tattoos. I do I do a very specific style of tattooing, which is fine line and black and gray, specifically black and black and gray. Um, and at the moment, I'm trying, I'm trying to, to use my machine on paper this time. Um, with pen, so so I'm I'm leaving the same effect I typically leave on skin with the same tools I acquired from the tattooing scene, um, and I'm trying to shift them into the contemporary light um, to hang in homes, like because the idea is to make your work last longer, you know. So and with tattooing, it will outlive me, um, and I want to extend that even further. And so that's the the whole idea of this of this phase. I love this. So you're in a state of transition and you said it was about, it's not, a, it's about constant change. It's about evolution. It is about evolution. Yeah. And what, and what is it that you, you said you, you, it's not about finding the place. It's about. It's about shifting, following the, the flow. It's, 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 I think it's, it's about the flow really. I mean, this year I'm turning 40 and, and although I, I didn't, I never got the, the phrase of life begins at 40 because it begins at zero, but at 40, you start making sense of, of some things that you have, may have missed along the way. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, at things a bit differently lately, uh, and, and, and following the flow is, is key, I think, both in life and in my professional life. Like, uh, well, it's 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 one whole thing. Like, my, my professional life is, uh, I give out what I am and, and what I do. So, uh, it's embedded. So, tell me, what are the things that you are making sense of that you perhaps missed in the past? I mean, it's 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 how little I know about everything, <laughs> really. Uh, every every time I open a new portal, you, I just discover that there is a whole new world that I have I know nothing about, and it makes me scared and excited at the same time. Um, and that I mean I I think it's addictive as well. I mean <laughs> maybe maybe it's another one of my addictions um, of of exploring new ideas that revolutionize the way I live. Um, just one idea can can change the way I do things from now on, um, and yeah, I mean every everything will start to change with you. So knowing that any idea could potentially change the whole way that you live in the future, are you are you present to the present moment, or are you always thinking about what's next? 
I try to be as much as I can. I am aware of it. Uh, I try. However, um, I, I live in a, in a city state place. Malta became, became, became a city, um, like one big city. And city offers a lot of distractions. So even though I'm, I mean, I'm working constantly, it's almost unnatural to be present in, 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 the, in a place where I live. So it is a constant struggle. Uh, the fact that am I always looking in in front? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, I'm always today. Today, I I'm not forcing it. However, I, I still refer to my future self. So, so I've had this question with with, with Helen to be fair, um, where you're asking, will you ever be satisfied? Because your past self. If you look at if you look at your present self from from your past self perspective, you are successful, right? Because you are doing things that he would have never imagined. However, I'm all, always trying to chase my future self, and that makes me feel unsuccessful yet. Um, so so there is this constant questioning, like, am I going to be satisfied enough? Uh, but I, I think I think the answer is by following what's next. I am satisfied, and I am successful in doing what am I doing. And when I look from my past self perspective, but I get into the trap of looking forward as well. I mean, it's it's what I do. I do I do what I do to leave stuff behind. So even that alone makes you look into the future. Yeah, and I, I love this whole philosophical question that we are exploring here, and there, there is because there is no essential um, answer, right? You know, it's like it's a because every, every moment we we're moving into the future self, you know, every every time, so we're always just hands fingertips away. But in terms of purpose, what does the focus on why mean to you? I, I ask this question: the why? I mean, I have many ways. It is a need. It, it's here, and I need to express it. Um, it is a need because I need to leave leave something behind, something decent behind. Um, I think mainly it's that it's the legacy of what I'm what I'm leaving behind me here. Like I, I'm just a visitor here, and and I need to to get. I need to manage to explore the best version to leave stuff from the best version behind. Maybe that's my way. Maybe that's my way. Explain that a bit more for me, please. Sorry. Um, the, so um, my, my, the, the, the why, the, the, full, the full purpose is to, to manage to get the best version of myself that I can, um, even in terms, in terms of personal and professional, uh, because the encounters I'm going to have with people are what I'm going to leave behind. The works as an artist are what am I going to leave behind when I die. So, so maybe that, that's the whole purpose. It's the legacy of what I'm going to leave behind for, a, for an extra insignificant amount of time. However, um, yes, I mean, that much. If, if, if I leave something behind that makes a positive impact on someone else, Maybe that will have a chain reaction for three or four generations. Um, I, I would be happy if I managed to obtain that. So you are an artist, and at the moment your canvas is skin as a yes. tattooist, and the legacy there is such that it will it will your art will die with the person. Yes. Um, so how how yeah. do you how do you transfer your canvas to something else? In, in which terms? In the sense that, it, that they will be, it will be there for a longer period for other people for two or three generations to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, what, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm using the the equipment, the, the tattoo equipment, um, with with a pen insert instead of a needle, and you leave the same effect on paper, and you can frame paper and you can preserve paper. Um, they are two completely different mediums. Although the same concept, even even the fact that one is going to die soon, sort of like like in, in a lifetime. However, you you spend a day with that person, 
And that is something else. Like that is something sacred in its own. Uh, the other one can pass, can be passed potentially from one generation to another. Um, but without the, 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 the personal, the personal uh, connection that happened with tattooing. So, so holistically, I still look at them as two completely different mediums, even though it's same equipment and same concept. So will you, will you use people as your muse or will you, what is it you want to, to, to create? No, typically, typically in terms in terms of tattooing, I uh, I have a particular style. But 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 um, in tattooing, it's a collaboration always. Like you come in with an idea. If it's something I can do, like it falls within my realm, um, it's something I embark on, and we will discuss further, um, and we will come to to a form of an agreement in terms of design. If we come to the agreement, I mean. Tattooing, tattooing has evolved so much in the last in the last ten years um, that everyone got got a category, like everyone got a style, and it's becoming more detached from 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 one style to another. The the, the advantage of that is that the clients get more sort of more quality because people are focusing on a style, and you can get better faster. So so you can give better tattoos. Um, so, so now it's not like, like before you go to the tattooist and ask for anything and he'll get you anything done. Um, you'll ask for, you, you research the tattooist, um, you, you see that this, his style fits your references. You go with the references and, and again, I'll see what you are after. Typically that's what I do. Uh, I ask for references, see what you're after. We'll have a consultation. Um, and we'll come to a form of a conclusion on the on the direction the data was going to take. But still, there will be changes because it's skin at the end of the day. So uh, what what usually I need is I know that that I have your trust as a tattooist. Like I I need that fully. Um, if I feel that you are not ready yet or you're not trusting me fully, um, then usually usually I prolong I I, I extend the the day so that uh, you you make your like you decide and then you move forward or and i'm hearing the values that you you take it you bring into your work here and your core values about wh- who you stand for what what it is that you are trying to achieve here and i can see how collaboration and trust and legacy fold into your work what would you describe as your your core values thomas I've never, I've never actually made this question uh, formally to myself, and I, and I don't, I, I don't have the list in mind of what words go down as values. Um, however, I am, I am honest. Like I give you what you, what you need, even to hear what you need, not, not what you want. Like I, I am, I am honest. I am, I like, I like to be fair. So. I don't know. I mean, I have, I have, I have this set of, of guidelines here. So I, I don't know exactly to pronounce them. However, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky because I, I have everything given here. Every time here tells me, no, it's a no. So, um, yeah, it's a, if, if I feel that it's not the right thing to do, it's not for me. And is that from the heart or is that from the gut that you're getting? I think it's from the gut. I think it's from the gut. Um, Yeah, I mean, the heart and the gut and the mind, I don't know exactly where you get these signals from. Uh, We we used to to think they come from the gut and it, it feels there. Um, but I'm sure it's, it's, it's a mix of, of, of memories and, and information. So it may come from here as well. So life begins at zero, and you said that you said that the whole getting to forty, you're making sense of things that you may have missed on the way. But you're following the flow. Where is the flow taking you right now? Sorry, where is the flow taking me right now? Doing what's right, not what's easy. And what does that mean? Again, it it, it comes from the gut. So um, I'm trusting more my instincts. I'm learning how to say no, even though. Um, I I still feel bad for someone's emotional disturbance for receiving an O, 
but I but but it's something that I need to do. Like um, it's it's the flow. Like if I don't say the no's, I don't I won't have time to develop myself further. Um, again, and and it's 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 easier not to say a no, but it's not right for me. So these it, it's these small things that are changing. I mean, they're they're almost naive as a, as a concept, and that's that's what I mean um, confuses me a bit further every time something like this happens when when there's a new thought and it changes the whole flow because it's it's naive as a as a concept, and then you realize it's changing the way you do stuff every day. And it's so so common that this happens when we reach midlife that we realize that we have been following other people's expectations or people pleasing or or leading a life that actually is not our own and it's only when we start to challenge our own assumptions and beliefs and values that we realize oh my goodness this is this is not what I want to be doing and you, as you, as you just <laughs> yeah. said you know learning how to say no it does sound you know, simple as a concept, but in reality, you know, it's, you've had years of experience and, and these boundaries have just been blurred, but now understanding where your boundaries are and what it is that you are no longer willing to put up with, it is doing what's right, not what's easy. That's what I believe. Yeah. And I, and to be fair, to be fair as well, I have a five and a half year old son. Um, and I, these, these two years, I've been on this self-growth journey. Uh, and, and I've been trying to instill in him what I'm learning. Like, as a question, like, what if, okay? What if he will get 20% of what I'm telling him? Because I tell him stuff that most probably he can't understand. Sometimes he can't understand nothing. Um, but other times he asks a question that he'll show you that he understood, like, 50, 60% of the concept. And I'm like, huh? So... So now I'm realizing that it's pointless to try to give a lesson. I need to show a lesson. So I'm trying to change myself in order for him to copy. Because that's what he's doing. He's copying me. So I'm telling him these concepts. And now, now, he's, now he's using breathwork, for example. And I'm like, what? At five and a half. So what? now what? Like, what will happen in 15 years now that you know breathwork at five and a half? Because I didn't. You know, you know meditation at five and a half, and and you you know how to choose your tribe by animals, like okay, okay. So so it's a, a, a that part is the social experiment. I'm trying to grow for that social experiment. And it's so interesting because you you are in this position as a parent, and and I do believe it's a privilege. You know, it's a it it's a wonderful opportunity that some of us have in life, and. Again, that questioning that life begins at zero, when you get to experience seeing life begin at zero, because we don't necessarily remember it ourselves, but when you are bringing a child into the world, you get to see these early formative years. And as, as you are now describing, you don't, you're not, you're not trying to teach him the way of the world. You're just showing him the way that you belief from your morals your perspective yes. your your values whether you've got them as a list or not or whether they just come from the gut you know that's that is irrelevant is it's it's part of who you are but it is so true that he will be emulating what you're doing through your actions it's it's a monkey see monkey do like uh, it, it it was it was a point like two years ago they two years ago i think i threw something at at his direction, sort of, I was just lucky. Um, like, he pushed all my buttons, and the, the monkey came out. And the moment I did that, I knew this this is not a good version. Like, I need to change, because it's pointless telling him not to be angry and not to be frustrated. And not, don't, throw, don't throw toys. And yet I threw a toy at him. So, so I need to do something to change this, and doing this, I'm going to learn how, and I might I might teach him and he will be able to control himself better if I am controlling myself better. So I think it's, it's, it's a whole cycle. So who is the mentor here? Excuse me? Who is the mentor? 
I think he is the he, he is the DJ. He definitely he is the DJ because because yeah. I mean uh, this I I've learned this from a friend of mine. Uh, it, the ideology, this idea. Um, whenever someone is giving you shit in your life, um, he's your DJ. Like he's pushing buttons that you don't even know exist. So by doing that, by by if you manage to tell your brain that he's the teacher and for a second you look at it like that, you are detaching from yourself and maintain posture and calmness. So yeah, he's been a, he's been a good teacher most of the days. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So tell me if you were able to live your life again, would you live it the way you have? Definitely. That was Definitely. so confident. That was like absolutely every. Yes, because some questions I've never asked to myself, but that I've asked to myself several times. And and yeah, I'm yeah, I'll do I'll do exactly this. Um, and that's which is, I was going to say that's interesting that you've asked yourself that several times, not just once, but several times. So were you yeah, expecting a questions. different answer? <laughs> um, no, because every time, every time you ask it in a different period in your life. Um, and it's a completely different thing. So there were there were points that I would do things differently, and I did. So when I when when I got asked when I got asked I so <laughs> this question was was given to me when I was working in in an online gaming company. Um, I came from the I studied I studied for a technician, um, which I I wasn't good at. Instead of going to art school because it was looked down on um and then i went the, into the casino and worked online gaming business and that one uh, one day during a coffee break a friend of mine asked me if you had to uh to to be born again what would you do and i told her i don't have the answer for that i'll, I'll answer tomorrow she told me listen just a ending question however it was the day i decided i was going to to leave uh, there it wasn't i didn't leave there i started practicing guys again took the course um, started working in a studio as a tattooist part time and then uh, opened my studio and and left unibet uh, for good but it was on a question like that so now when i it was a game changer for me that question isn't that interesting how it was it just casual conversation that you were having it was casual conversation Wow. See, one question, one thing that will change your life for the... <laughs> it's crazy. And, but... and does it have to be someone particular who asks these questions or it could be a random stranger who who asked you something? For me, it could be a, a random stranger because um, the way I decipher questions, the way I give questions clearly doesn't comply with the rest of society. Some questions I receive... I receive calls for for surveys, and they ask me questions that the weight of them I, I can't even answer. I'm like, really? Like you should ask this to eight wise men around the round table, um, not me at ten o'clock in the morning. Um, so yeah, clearly I take I take weight in some questions. It's the way they hit me. I, I think if I'm in I if I'm present, it could be anyone. If I'm distracted, distracted. Um, I'm not going to get it. So the question of me asking you about the flow and and following the flow, and you you mentioned that you have your five year old son, five and a half year old son, and that you're on this self growth journey, and that if he could get just twenty percent of of what you're sharing with him, that would be incredible. But again, you know, what do you think the percentage of what he's trying to teach you is landing? Well, I mean, thanks to thanks thanks to him, I'm 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 constantly growing. So, uh, I mean, the impact of that is it's crazy. Like, I think there are. I experienced two fundamental moments in my life. Um, the moment I went full time, self employed, um, it's like a different chipset happened. Like now you're ha- you're hustling. Like not, not, at the end of the month, you're not going to get your paycheck. So so yeah, you're, th- there's there's something uh, that starts. And and when I when when I had Sam, 
Yeah, it's not when when he when he was born. It's 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 slower than that. It's more elongated. It's not like like the day you are self-employed. That is uh, full-on activation mode instantly Kickstarter. Uh, <laughs> but but this one happens happens more gradually. But it happens like for some people maybe um, because I uh, I um, for some people. So what is it that you mentioned about the collaboration with your tattoo work? How are you going to get that collaborative piece with your own artwork? Mm, um, no, um, it, the artwork is not intentioned to be uh, to be collaboration. Like I, I, I did commissions before. Um, I'm I'm not excluding that categorically. However, it's not the intention. The intention is, um, no. I mean, it's I'm 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 having all the decisions this time. Like, um, I I'll do all the way. <laughs> no, you either like it and hang it, or else you you don't. Um, it's I, I do stuff for me. I do a lot. I'm I'm selfish. I do a lot of stuff for me. Um. It gets my my best work whenever I do something for me, um, because because the way I'm envisioning stuff, um, it would be easier to work with stuff that that I already can see than trying to build something that you want and try to make it work. I mean, it, it can. That's that's the collaboration. However, however, yeah. Yeah, when I'm when I'm not tattooing, um, this is uh, what I'm trying to do. Is is my time, like it's it's me time. It's away from the studio at home at least, um, uh, to spend more time there than more time at the studio uh, to have balance. Because <laughs> this this way the, the balance, it's this to try to balance everything, um, have prolonged both. And it's interesting that you you say you're doing stuff for you, and yet you're also wanting to create a legacy. You're also balancing. I'm not sure what it is you're balancing. So share what it is that you're you're looking to seek a a balance with. Um, a balance with the time I spend away from home and at home. The way I sp- the, the the time I spend relaxing versus versus working. Um, socializing and alone because because again i mean while tattooing i i get stories i i meet people i listen i listen to their stories I, we build relationships um but it comes at a way again i mean everyone has his own journey and his own past which is helpful for me when when i'm not in my good moment because you just remember listen like you're not the bad, okay? You shut up and you continue doing what you have to do. Um, so that's good. However, there's a way to it as well. Um, so yeah, the time is is good and is sacred, but the time alone, again, I'm getting goalie. So I'm cherishing the time alone as well. So it's 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 a lot of small things that that may seem negligible, but the micro balancing act, <laughs> I might call it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. So, so tell me, who inspires you right now, Thomas? Alive or dead? Who inspires me? Um, in terms of artistry, I have I have a lot of artists. Like in tattooing terms, I have a, a lot of artists I follow and are inspirational in the contemporary world. There are a lot like in terms of the old masters, well, the old masters are an inspiration because irrelevant of what they were doing, 500 years from their passing, we're still talking about them. Uh, so whatever they did, chapeau. Um, it's it wasn't it wasn't about the artwork. I I I I grew out of the belief of the actual artwork. What they did was was bigger than that. They created a story. They created a narrative. Created an audience. Um, in times where it was way more difficult than it is for us, and I still have, haven't figured it out really. But but yeah, whatever whatever they did, worked because because they survived the test of time, them and their artworks. 
and and this is that every time every time we see uh, a hundred million euro painting um it's the story resurfacing again like that's power it's not the, it's not the amount of money for it. however if it wasn't for the amount of money um their name wouldn't have resurfaced so they managed to make it road for hundreds of years and that, and that's what's so important about art particularly in its all of its forms is that it is a connection it's a story it's it's saying something and you and everybody gets a different meaning from it just as purpose True story yeah. so if someone was listening to this and there was a particular story that you would like to share what would it be a particular story which I like to share. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue from that question that I've been asked. If you were to be born again, what would you do? And the day after, I decided that I should choose the part of tattooing. Um. So I decided. I decided to do that. I'll, I'll tell the story because it's so absurd. Um. That that. I mean, it was just trying. Okay. Um, so what I did is I booked my first tattoo. It was a chest piece uh, that I knew it will take three days. Um, I started building a portfolio. This, the, 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 if the session was about to happen in seven months. So I built a portfolio. I went to the guy. Um, in those three days, I built a relationship. I told him that, that I'm, I'm drawing. I'm interested in tattooing. I showed him. Uh, the portfolio and who was interested me in in uh, in, in apprenticing uh, well teaching me um, that happened he told me to go and work for him um and two years down the line i had my own studio that in all fairness for me is a story that my fr my friends joke about it because it was so absurd at the time that they encouraged me just because they were my friends not because it made any sense um however if you never try, you never know. So if if everything is leading you to there, well, you don't have nothing to lose and, and just die. We're here. Uh, it's j just like Jordan Peterson says, like we're here all in, be your best hand or uh, like have all your chances. I'd rather have 100 no's uh, than never experience yes. I'm okay with the no's. And I love that you just used a gaming reference to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deal the best hand and go all in. And it is so true that if you don't try, you never know. I mean, what a great line to sort of close out on. Tell me, Thomas, how would people get to follow your work, see what you're up to? Where's the best place for them to reach out? So I'll 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 have the my work sent on uh, on on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, for bookings, usually I work through emails. There, there's, there are some guidelines of, of pictures that they need to send, reference and photos of, of the body parts they, they'd like to get it with a small, uh, with a small description and we will get them back to them. I'm not the most um, organized and timely person uh, on earth. However, in time, I will, I will get to them and, and like, I'll be more than happy to work with them. Amazing. Well, I'll make sure all your links go into the show notes. So, Thomas, thank you so much for sharing your thank incredible you so much, story. It was nice to talking to you. Yeah, and I don't think it's absurd at all. I think it's incredible, and I, I love that you followed your 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 dream in terms of where you felt you really were a natural fit in in the world, and that you are now challenging everything, and that your son is teaching you all these great lessons. So, absolutely, I'd love to hear where you go in five, ten, fifteen, twenty years. It's going to be amazing. Have you got some final words, Thomas, for the listener? It's one. It's one of the mantras I'm repeating to Sam: Do what's right, not what's easy. Um, that's my final mantra. I'm. It's it's change. It's changing me little by little. How has this conversation had an impact on you? What value have you received from tuning in? What are your reflections with actions? Please take a moment to leave me an Apple podcast or Spotify review sharing how Focus on Why has made a difference to you today. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, simply connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. 
have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.